Andrew, thank you so much. Have you checked your grocery bill recently? Egg and poultry prices have been rising in the midst of the worst bird flu outbreak in U.S. history. With the country's tightening poultry supply, some may look to adjust their diet to incorporate less meat. My next guest says this is just an example of how our Western meat-heavy diets are no longer sustainable. Joining me right now is the director of the EAT Initiative, Dr. Gunhild Storidlan. She joins me now for more on that. Good to see you. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. First, explain the initiative, the EAT initiative. You are the director and, and what's behind what you're doing. Um, short, uh, EAT is a global initiative that links food, health and the environment across the different sectors involved in food production, uh, science, business, politics and civil society. And the most important thing to say is why EAT is important. And that's because uh, some of uh, our main global challenges in terms of health and environment is actually caused by the food we eat and how that food is produced. Uh, for example, the epidemics of ob obesity and uh, uh, chronic disease and climate change. And you, your personal story helped launch you into this, right? I mean, you are obviously, a, a, well, you're a former model, you're a PhD, <laughs> uh, and you're, you're a cancer survivor. Uh, not, not cancer, but an uh, autoimmune uh, disease. Um, but, well, my medical back, uh, background uh, as a physician um, took me into the public health uh, perspective. And I've been, I've been raised uh, in, in the rural uh, countryside of Norway. So uh, learning about the importance of, uh, of environmental sustainability, uh, the de dependence upon our ecosystems, made me really conscious about climate change and and environmental uh, future. So starting to, to look into how can we uh, ensure human health uh, for present and future generations, I, I started to look into the opportunities with food. And you've been identifying certain diets that will be healthy but also sustainable. Can you talk to us about what you've identified? Well, we, we, uh, the EAT initiative is a, is a young initiative, only two years since we launched it. Um, but we were mind to identify those diets that are both uh, healthy, health promoting, uh, and sustainable in environmental terms. There are so many existing knowledge gaps, and we need to look into these diets and food production systems in a holistic perspe uh, perspective. Uh, and that's the main objective of the EAT initiative, to, to initiate more interdisciplinary research. But then it's not, I mean, new knowledge is essential, but it's not sufficient to make behavioral change. Unfortunately, today, a healthy diet, which is also sustainable, is all, often impossible or it's uh, economic and unaffordable for many, many people. So we end up with uh, a situation that we actually have, uh, we, we don't have the right choices. So we are also looking into how industry and policymakers can enable systemic changes at, at the population level so, we, so the easy choice can be the right choice. So we're looking at pictures of, of various food while you're talking. So have you identified any diets that are actually meeting these objectives? Well, I mean, in, um, to, to say it uh, roughly... To help our viewers to, watching. The viewers, uh, if you should do one thing as a consumer, uh, reduce uh, processed, highly processed food, uh, meat and processed meat uh, in particular, uh, eat better uh, quality, but a little bit less, and much more plants, and lower down in the food value chain. So more fruits and vegetables, more whole grains, and local, uh, locally sourced food in season is always a good option. This is uh, really uh, fascinating and also also really helpful. Gunhild, good to have you on the program. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Dr. Gunhild Storland joining us there. And the